Hey there, welcome to Sales Funnel Mastery. I'm Brandon Stiles, digital marketer and sales funnel expert out of Atlanta. And today you're going to be learning about how to properly A-B test your landing pages. So if you don't know what A-B testing is, A-B testing is something that few companies actually do with their websites. And it is testing different elements on a landing page or a sales page in order to get it to convert better and jump the conversion rate. So if a hundred people visit your sales page and there's one headline and one person ends up jumping into your sales funnel, you're converting at 1% for that page. Now let's say you go and you change that headline and all of a sudden you notice that out of a hundred people that come to your landing page, four people sign up. So you 400 times your sign up just by changing a headline on the page. So that's A-B testing and you should be using it because a lot of people don't. And it can be overwhelming because you literally can test everything. You can test headline copy, bullet point copy, videos, images, page color, button color, button text, all this stuff. And people are like, holy crap, that's a lot to test. Where do I even start? And the truth is, it's not worth testing everything unless you're getting major, major traffic because then that's when you can notice some significantly statistical advantages. But if you're talking a couple thousand hits a month to a sales page, it might be a little bit harder to test. But that being said, I'm going to lay out a few rules to keep in mind for A-B testing and then I'm going to give you an order you can start testing in. So let's jump into rule number one. Rule number one of A-B testing. This is your golden rule. This is your do unto others rule, all right? Only run one test at a time, one variable at a time. So if you're trying to optimize a landing page, don't test the headline at the same time as your image, as the same time as your bullet points, as the same time as your background color. Because if you've got four tests going, how are you going to know which one is making the difference? You might see a change, but you're going to have no clue what's making the difference. So only run one test at a time and only test one variable during that single test. Rule number one. Rule number two, run the test at the exact same time. So don't let that fool you from rule number one. Here's what I mean by that. If you're going to test the headline, of a landing page, don't run test A in November and then test B in December because you're dealing with different months. Like in December, people are going to be buying a lot more, okay? Or they might be in different, uh, they might be traveling and, and responding differently to ads than they would have. So when you do your test, split it at the same time, meaning that when a page is loaded once, it shows this. When it's loaded the next time, it loads option B. Rule number two. Rule number three, decide before you test on what counts as statistically significant for your landing page or for your company. So let's say you have a thousand people come to your landing page and 498 of them buy your product while headline one shows and then 502 of them buy it when headline number two shows. That's not very statistically significant, all right? You're only talking a, a very minor difference there. You want to look for big, big numbers so that if a thousand people show up, then 800 buy from headline one and then 200 buy from headline two. That is when you can safely say, okay, headline one, probably rocks it out on that one. But everyone's different. You might not be getting a thousand people to a landing page. It might just be a hundred or it might be five. I'm often quoted that if you get a thousand people in a survey or a group, then that thousand, whatever percentage of people answer in the thousand person survey would translate to if a million people participated or a billion. So I think the Cutoff is right around a thousand people to get the most statistically significant results for your landing page. But whatever yours is, decide on what counts as statistically significant for you. So now that we've covered that, let's go into the order of A B testing your page. Everyone does it differently, but this is what I recommend and what I do. So when I'm testing, I focus on mainly six things. Now you might be sitting there being like, geez, it will take me for freaking ever to test all six things. I'm not saying you have to, but if you wanted to test everything on your page, you can. 
and this is the order I would do it. Test number one. Test the biggest thing on your page, which is your offer. So if right now your offer is an ebook, try a video. If your offer is a video, try a course. If your offer is a 30 day free trial, try a 50 day free trial. Starting off A-B testing on a landing page with your offer will give you the most bang for your buck and help you up your conversion rate the fastest. Step two, test the copy and test in this order, the headline, the subheadlines, and then the bullet points. Because people are gonna see this headline first, then they're going to read the subheadline if there is one second, and then they're going to jump right to the third easiest thing to read, which is gonna be the bullet points. So when you're testing your copy, start with the headline, move to the sub, and then to the bullet points. And then if you want to, you can test the uh, in-between body copy. A lot of people won't even read all of that. They're just gonna hit those main points and decide right then. Some might say unfair, some might say time saver. I don't know. Start with that if you're A-B testing your copy. A-B test number three is your call to action. What is your call to action on your landing page? Is it subscribe? Is it click to download? Uh, on Facebook ads, you have learn more. You have download now. You have a lot of, uh, of different call to actions. You might want to test that and see which one is converting the best. And I'm not talking about button color and border radius and all that. Just test out the words or, or whatever action you want them to take. Uh, click below to subscribe or click below to download or download now before it's too late. Test your call to action, number three. Step four, your multimedia. So your images, your videos, all of that. That's going to be your fourth test. So see images. If there's an image of your product, maybe switch to an image of people using your product. Or if you've got an image, maybe switch to a video of someone using your product or enjoying your services. Test number four is images, video, any multimedia. Test number five is your form. The old form, I harp on having short forms. So when someone comes in and they see this, and it's got like 50 boxes in there, kind of looks like a W-9 and people hate filing taxes because you lose money, uh, people say, nope, not doing that today. However, when they come on and they just see a nice little this right here, enter your email, and here's a little button, they're happy and it's gonna convert a lot better. However, there may be some instances where you need to collect more information and that's okay, but play around with that form. Maybe you could take off one form field or two to get that conversion rate up. Finally, your sixth step to A being a page is the rest of the page itself. So this comes into colors, background colors, border sizes, text sizes, uh, the way elements are arranged on a page. I mean, you really could go pixel by pixel and take all day. Usually, if you're getting down to here, you're getting a ton of page views, and so it becomes a little bit quicker to test. But that stuff becomes important because 2 or 3% uh, to Coke or one of those big corporations might be the difference in millions of dollars. So they want to squeeze all they can out of that squeeze page. Ah, write that one down. But anyhow, number six is testing your page, your colors, the order of the element, the space between. But most businesses will be fine sticking there and up. And honestly, most will probably be good starting from here up. So if I was to say anything, I'd say stick with those first four. So that's it. That is how to think about and approach A-B testing your landing and your sales pages. Hope that helps. Once again, I'm Brandon Stiles. I'm a digital marketer and sales funnel expert out of Atlanta. Please click through to my site below so I can up my vanity metrics and subscribe to my channel to get more information. Now let me ask you a question. Out of these six steps, which one do you think that you're going to start with on your landing pages today? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. I'd love to see what everyone's thinking with it. And I'll see you there. Thank you.